Hello, good morning, good evening, and welcome to Big World Cinema. Without further ado, we'll continue with what you're here for. And to ensure this channel survives, please don't skip the ads. Thank you. Prior to heading to the Philippines for the first time, I was swayed by a vlogger's continual mantra that Filipinas don't discriminate against age and are open to relationships with old foreigners well past their sell-by date. Which was music to my ears as I approached my 58th anniversary. Since I'd turned 50, I'd become invisible in the UK had been living in Brighton by the coast and gone through a period of unintentional celibacy having only had sex once in the previous 10 years. So if all the vloggers were to be believed I was heading to the Philippines under the illusion that just walking out of my hotel or condo the streets would be paved with posses of salivating Filipinas with arms outstretched wanting to grab you as you inch gingerly along the obstacle-strewn sidewalk. Sure, when I first arrived in the Philippines, I got some attention from females of all ages, from high school students through to their ageing grannies, but their looks were of intrigue rather than desire. At the time, I had good intentions of finding a Filipina to settle down with, maybe. Now, I've had my fair share of serious relationships. From the age of 18, I went from one girlfriend to the next for the next 15 years. Had three relationships in the UK that lasted over three years. By the age of 33, I was a single man again spent the next 11 years alone until I was 44 when I got into a relationship with a 29 year old Hindu MILF from South Africa which ended after 15 months when she revealed her true colours as a fully fledged bunny boiler. So that was it. Serious relationships for me ended at the age of 45 Having shunned commitment all my life, being pretty much a serious bachelor, did I really come to the Philippines seeking a serious relationship at the age of 58? Covid happened. So if Filipinas on the street were giving you the eye, you didn't know what they might be hiding behind their face masks. For the best part of the next two years, dating was conducted online. I had a few flings with Filipinas and also met a young Filipina online who moved into my condo in Cebu. At first it felt great being in a loving relationship again, but the honeymoon period didn't last long. Everything became a complete ball ache. There were issues with trust, communication, honesty, cultural and age differences. So we were doomed from the beginning really. I just wanted my old life back. Realised that entering into a serious relationship at this stage of my life wasn't really what I wanted. I would rather be alone than experience the feelings of awkwardness I felt in her company but maybe we were just the wrong fit. I met up with other Filipinas I met on online dating websites. One was Mylene, a 33 year old care assistant who kept asking in our chats if visitors were allowed in my condo. I arranged to meet her in social bar in Ayala, Cebu with two of her female friends. After we dined, Mylene and one of her friends came back to my condo. Then she left me alone with Mylene. In the bedroom, as I was suggesting to her that maybe I should slip a condom on, Mylene had quickly taken control of the situation and guided me into her lady garden. <laughs> 
Whilst trying different positions, Mylene was keen for me to come inside her. In fact, only one Filipina who I've got jiggy with has insisted that I use a condom. She was a 23-year-old sex maniac who didn't want to get pregnant. Apart from her, the use of a condom has never been aired. No wonder there are so many single mothers in the Philippines. Anyway, when Mylene left my condo the following morning, she sent messages saying she'd like to spend more time with me, then later tried calling me, which I ignored, not enjoying suddenly being swamped by her attention. The following morning, Mylene texted again, said she liked me so much, but knew she wasn't the girl I was looking for. I'm looking for someone that loved me unconditional, she said, and I want a baby. Someday, somehow. Ah, there's the rub. It was as if that was Mylene's intention all along. Constantly asking if guests were allowed in my condo and spent the whole night trying to make me come inside her. So this encounter happened quite early in my Philippines journey and since then I've seen many references to Filipinas craving to be passed on the genes of white men so they can bear tall children with coloured eyes with the hope of producing a future Miss or Mr Universe. Now I must stress that not all Filipinas are sperm banks. Many commenters on my videos say that all Filipinas just use foreigners ATM. Here at BWC, Uncle doesn't charge a subscription fee like Auntie does, but buying us a coffee would be much appreciated. Thank you. But it's not as clear cut as that. Sure, some Filipinas are out to fleece foreigners, but many Filipinas actually have good jobs and don't need your money. As one Filipina recently pointed out whilst being interviewed on a YouTube channel I saw, who said, I have my own money, I don't need a foreigner. My Filipina girlfriend had her own job and didn't ask me for anything. In fact, when we went out she insisted on paying for stuff. Unlike the majority of other Asian girls I've dated who seem to forget which hand their purse is in as soon as the bill arrives. One Filipina I chatted to briefly online recently asked if I was the sort of guy who wanted his girlfriend to live with him full time. She comes from the provinces, has 10 siblings, has moved to the big city to work in a store earns 400 pesos a day, works six days a week. That's 9,600 pesos or $175 per month. The majority of which she sends home to her parents, which is expected of her. She can't even treat herself to something nice after grafting all day. She lives in a boarding house, shares a bunk bed with another girl. Her rent is 1,500 pesos a month. You're living in more salubrious surroundings in a guarded condo with a comfy bed, hot shower, AC, swimming pool and gym. You're invisible back home, but suddenly you're God's gift to young Filipinas in their late teens and twenties who are attracted to you. You can certainly understand why Filipinas turn to foreigners for security and to live a more comfortable and secure lifestyle. Oh my gosh, what makes me so irresistible all of a sudden? Now naturally I'd have a lot more in common with a Filipino of my own generation, or maybe 30 years younger. But, and I know I'm going to get criticised for this comment, but who cares, I prefer saying how it is rather than pussyfooting around, if you excuse the pun. In an ideal world, I'd much rather date an older Filipina in her 30s or 40s. But the Philippines isn't an ideal world. And after 35 years of age, Filipinas are generally past their sell-by date.
as their muffin top spreads more rapidly and they're too lazy to do anything about it. In comparison to their Asian sisters from countries such as Thailand, Japan or Vietnam, Filipinas don't generally age well. Anyway, that's not who I want. Being pretty shallow, I'd rather date an attractive lady who still maintained her looks and looks after herself. I mean, that's not a tall ask, is it? I've got a head full of receding hair, a mouth full of crowns, Coke bottle vision, and I'm a cheap Charlie. I'm a big catch, me. Getting together with a Filipina in her 30s or 40s would actually be quite effortless here, but I'd need to lower my standards somewhat. She'll more likely be rated a four or five on the looks chart. We'll have a body to lie for on the couch, nurturing her rice gut. And younger Filipinas would be much more attracted to you if you're a young foreigner in your 30s or 40s. But for a guy of 60 plus, it's totally different. You'd have thought. But they will say, looks aren't important. I mean, physically, you're well past your sell-by date. Really? Of course, where poverty is concerned, many Filipinas can't be too fussy. Especially the Filipina who got knocked up at 19 by her Filipino boyfriend, who showed his prowess at running at fast speed as soon as news of her pregnancy was announced. Filipinas look to foreigners for salvation, who've come to save their lives as the majority of Filipino guys wouldn't consider hooking up with a single mother. But you would. Age is just a number is a common phrase young Filipinas constantly chant nowadays. Or if you've got plenty of cash to flash, it's relatively easy to punch above your weight by donating your credit cards to your Filipina girlfriend to kit out her wardrobe with Gucci clobber in Dumaguete or Darwin. But they beg to differ as if they've been taught it parrot fashion from a young age at high school where they've only recently graduated from. Another phrase I see constantly banded around is date to marry. Each of these phrases were quoted by two Filipinas, both 23 years old, who said they were looking for a serious relationship as they weren't getting any younger. So age isn't just a number. They're conscious of the passing of time, after all, and yours. Given that Filipinas are not original thinkers and will follow each other like sheep, some of them are lying. But given the choice, are they really wanting to date an old man older than their own father? Or are they just faking it, keeping your bed warm until your money rounds out? Nothing wrong with that. There's no harm in providing for them and giving them a better life for themselves, is there? You're each playing a role. It's a fair exchange. Who can blame her? If I was a beautiful girl, I'd do the same. Why would I want to work for a living if I can get by on my beauty alone? Online nowadays, I regularly see the other expression, I want to be spoiled. Or I'm a sugar baby in search of a sugar daddy. I will give you everything you want for 25,000 pesos a month. And as soon as she's bled you dry, she'll be hitting on your 80-year-old neighbour. Actually, the only truth I find in the expression, age is just a number, is if you're in your 70s or 80s, then they're even keener to get to know you whilst you still have your faculties to sign over your family estate before you slip into a coma or grave. Having lived here for three and a half years, I've grown more cynical about dating Filipinas. No shit, Sherlock, I hear you cry. On meeting a new Filipina, I'm reminded of the Monaco song, What Do You Want From Me? As soon as I hear the words, not working at the moment, it raises a red flag and I tend to run a mile. Well, walk fast, anyway. I often wonder 
what the arrangement is when foreigners come to the Philippines and arrange for a Filipina to travel with them. I met two French guys recently in Palawan who had two Filipinas with them. Each time these guys came over, the two Filipinas would travel with them. One said she was actually with another foreigner, but when the Frenchman came calling, she, just, she ditched him to travel with the French guy. Apart from the Filipinas being able to travel to nice places, have free meals and stay in decent accommodation for a change, do they also get paid for their <coughs> time? I recently saw a video by a young American vlogger around 30 years of age who whilst travelling around the Philippines on his motorbike met another foreigner who was also a bike rider. This guy was 59, had an 18 year old Filipina girlfriend. He proceeded to offer his girlfriend to the younger guy suggesting he let her travel with him. WTF, the couple broke up and the younger couple got together. She quit her job and the young American paid the Filipina a salary plus extras to travel with him. Called her his girlfriend when they traveled together for two months, but has since returned to the States and she isn't his girlfriend anymore. So basically his Filipina girlfriend is what is referred to as the girlfriend experience where you hire someone for however long you're going to be staying here or traveling together and pay her accordingly. Look, each to their own. I'm not someone who judges people's actions or motives, whether it's right or wrong. But for me, it just raises questions about money being the dominant factor during their brief relationship. Feels too much like prostitution. The whole time I'd be thinking, how much is she faking it? I don't know why the Philippines isn't recognised by its acting ability as a lot of Filipinas I've met are masters of deceit and storytelling and could achieve Oscars in acting. Throughout my time in the Philippines I'd regularly hear stories of partners cheating on each other. But it isn't just the men. Filipinas are just as guilty when it comes to cheating. Some boyfriends are in on the deception. Go on, sweetheart, go and scam the gullible foreigner for some cash. He won't know. He's half dead anyway. He won't be aware you're fleecing money from his pension money. I really don't trust Filipinas at all. In my mind, a Filipina is guilty unless proven innocent. But it's not only Filipinas cheating on their Filipino partners. Filipinas are also cheating on their foreign boyfriends. I'd been chatting online with a lady in Cebu. Malu was a single mother with two young kids whose Filipino boyfriend had died in a motorcycle crash. We arranged for her to come over to my condo one evening. She told me that she now had a boyfriend in the UK who she was in a long distance relationship with and had been for over a year. They'd never met each other in the flesh but on her shoulder, she had a tattoo of this bald British guy with a beard. As I was taking Malou from behind, this bald British man with a beard was staring me in the face, which I found pretty amusing and got a fit of the giggles and needed to explain to Malou the weirdness of her getting a tattoo of a guy she'd never met before in person. A fortnight later, Malou messaged me saying her grandma had died and she needed money to borrow to go to the provinces, so I sent her 500 pesos. Then a month later, I sent her another 500 pesos for her to return to Cebu. We then arranged for her to come over to my place on four separate occasions to repay me, but she never showed. So I imagine that was my payment for the sex and taking the piss out of her having a tattoo of a boyfriend she'd never actually met whilst rogering her from behind. Other Filipinas will see their friend with a foreigner and want some of what their mate is having. 
One British expat I recently met was doing all right, thank you very much, with the ladies in their early 20s. Whilst her friends were looking the other way, each of them would arrange a rendezvous with Mr. Stud and not tell her friends. I couldn't see that happening to me, not at 60 plus, but this guy was a young man in his late 40s and I think those dozen years make a lot of difference. I've met a few guys in their late 40s who are gifted with an abundance of Filipinas prostrating themselves at their feet. As my time in the Philippines progressed, my getting attention from Filipinas has regressed to an extent that I thought maybe I dreamt the attention I was getting when I first arrived in Cebu. Advisors say, get out of the big cities and you'll get more action. You don't even have to be a blue-eyed blonde resembling Donald Trump. Even an ugly Joe with a comb over wearing Jesus boots will get attention as the foreigners are a rarity in the provinces. But even in the smaller cities or out in the sticks, it never really happened. I believe you have to be more patient in the outback as things don't happen as fast there. Not for me, anyway. But my days are numbered. I can't wait a couple of years before I'm noticed. Maybe I had my guard completely up and was completely sceptical of anyone showing interest in me rather than my camera. I mean, it was happening occasionally, but not on the level of adoration that expats have suggested in the provinces. And the girl I hooked up with in Davao, who already had a child, didn't know and probably didn't care how old I was as long as I contributed towards her child's birthday cake. I moved to Manila. I actually thought I'd have more opportunities there, casting a wider net. But whilst walking the streets of Metro Manila for four and a half months, I was now completely invisible. The only successes I had were online. On dating websites, my age is listed as late 40s with Filipinas unaware of my real age. I'm sure the senior high school student who approached me on Pina Love wanting to experience some bedroom action for the first time with a foreigner probably wouldn't have been so keen if she knew I was three times her age. So my only successes in Manila were down to me lying about my age. Now a lot of guys here will say, hang on a minute, I'm 69. <coughs> I still get lots of attention from the ladies. But what is it exactly, apart from your seven chins, are they attracted by? Look, there are many genuine Filipinas out there. You only have to see the number of foreign expats who are in successful relationships with Filipinas to realise that. But you also have to separate a lot of wheat from the chaff before finding a good one. You can pretty much tell a genuine Filipina. It's a lot easier to recognise a genuine Filipina than a faker who's fine-tuned her act. In all my time in the Philippines, I've probably met around six Filipinas who instantly stand out as down-to-earth, genuine Filipinas who aren't selfie-obsessed social media posers whose world is just a facade. I saw an interview with the American Christian in the Philippines who has a YouTube channel who said it took him nine years before he found the right Filipina. Going on his calculation, I've got another five years which would take me up to 68 years of age if I'm still alive. But do I really want one? Just a quick reminder to please click the thumbs up button if you liked the video or thumbs down button if you didn't. Obviously. Thank you.
been watching Uncle, the man from Big World Cinema. Please like and subscribe and send cash.